and we are recording. Okay, there it goes. Um, and so this will be available on our YouTube channel so you can re-watch it uh, for all the things you might have missed because we will talk pretty fast. Or you can use it as a good sleep aid um, later on if you have <laughs> some difficulty going to sleep. All right, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nikki. Do you have screen sharing ability? I and Nikki's do. Gonna take it away. All right. So welcome everyone. I'm so glad to be here and able to chat with y'all tonight. My name is Nikki Smith. I use she, her pronouns and I'm the director of housing services. Uh, housing services deals with all of the contracting assignments and billing for on-campus residents, as well as our off-campus dining plan holders. We're gonna spend a little bit of time tonight talking about on-campus housing in your second year and beyond uh, before I turn it over to my colleagues in off-campus housing. Um, I am the only one presenting from my office tonight, so I'm not going to keep an immediate eye on the Q&A. I'll be happy to respond to Q&A after we sort of work through these slides, uh, but please hang in there with me. We'll get to your questions, I promise. Um, so we're starting with second year housing, and the thing I want to make sure that we are clear off at the top is that second year housing is not guaranteed. So we have over 30,000 students, but only about 10,500 beds. So even if I wanted to Two, I physically don't have the capacity to house all of our undergraduate population for all four years. So our returning students need to do some sort of application to return to campus housing. And there are five ways that students can come back to on-campus housing. If you're a member of the Corps of Cadets, if you're participating in a living learning program, if you go through the housing application process, if you are a member of one of our, uh, one of our fraternities or sororities that has a house out on Oak Lane, or if you are successful as an application for a residential being student leader. Thus, that's who comes back to us as a returning student. And we're gonna talk about these in sort of two ways. Campus partner rosters are how we get some of our returning students. So if your student currently is a member of the core and they are gonna be returning to the core next year, then they're gonna be coming back to live on campus because the core does have a commitment to living on campus. And that will happen because the core will give us a list of here's who we expect to have coming back. And then our office will email those students to their Virginia Tech email to prompt them to sign their contract for next year. That typically happens in early January. So if you've got a returning cadet, you're pretty good to go. There's not much more that you need to worry about right now. Your cadet will get prompted and they just need to log on and sign their contract when they get that prompt. If your student joins an Oak Lane fraternity or sorority, those organizations give us their roster for the upcoming year as well, just like the core does. And then we'll start getting those rosters actually later this semester. So around November, December, we'll start getting rosters from our Oak Lane organizations telling us, here's who's gonna be living in our house for the upcoming year. And so we will take those rosters and accordingly we will send out contract offers to students Virginia Tech email. Um, so if your student is already a member of an Oak Lane organization, or if they're looking to join, then this could be in their future as well. So those are core cadets at our Oak Lane community operate based on rosters given to housing services by our campus partners. If you're not a member of one of these organization types, there are still three ways to apply to return to campus housing. I'm really gonna hone in on our living learning program option because this is the largest population of students who return is through our living learning programs. So these are by application. If your student is currently a first year who applied and accepted a two year commitment to a residential college, then we're gonna automatically roll that contract over for that second year. And so these would be students who are first years who accepted an offer to the Honors Residential Commons in East AJ, first years who accepted an offer to the Residential College at West Ambler Johnston, and first years who accepted an offer to the Leadership and Social Change Residential College in O'Shaughnessy. Once we roll over those contracts, we will send emails to their students' VT email saying, just a reminder, as a two-year contract holder, you don't need to do anything further. We've already rolled this contract over for you. And that'll probably happen in about a week, week and a half. All of our other returning students are encouraged to apply through the LLP returner process. Those applications are gonna open on September 30th and the ability to submit an application will close on the 22nd of November, but then program acceptances and housing contracts are due to us on the 13th of December. So if your student wants to secure their housing for the upcoming year, they can do that before they ever leave for final after finals in December. 
our LLPs love having folks return to the program. They love welcoming new folks to the program. And so just because your student may not be in an LLP now does not mean they can't join one. So the LLP returners are for folks who are currently in a program and want to return to that program. They're for folks who are in a program and maybe want to switch programs. They've really enjoyed their time with this program, but they're interested in doing something differently next year. And it's absolutely welcoming to students who've never been part of a program and would like to join one. So keep on the lookout. Once we launch those processes, there will be social media posts. We will have campus notices that go out to students to let them know that the process is open. And we're also going to have some posts on Hokie Family Hub so that if you are subscribed in Hokie Family Hub, you'll know when that opens as well. So that is our biggest process. I really strongly encourage returning students who want to come back to go through this process. If your student is interested in serving as a residential well-being student leader, that process is actually open right now. It just opened this morning. So applications for 2025-2026 residential well-being student leaders opened this morning. They will close at 5 o'clock on Monday, October 7th. And successful applicants will know that they have been offered a position and will have their contracts due before finals in December. So both of these processes, LLP returners and residential well-being student leaders, will be wrapped up before students leave for winter break. If your student wants to return, but isn't necessarily interested in being in a living learning program or being a residential well-being student leader, we will have a housing application process for general, what we call general assignment students. That won't occur until January. And so that will open on the first day of spring classes at 8 a.m. And it will close at five o'clock on that first Friday of spring classes, the 24th of January at 5 p.m. What I want to be very clear about with the housing application process is there's very little student agency in this process. This is a lottery system. So there's nothing students can do to increase or decrease their chances of getting a contract through the HAP. I also can't tell you right now how many students are going to get offers through HAP. We're going to wait to see how many students return through living learning programs, what our expected returner rate for the core of cadets is, and what our expected incoming first year population is gonna look like when admission sets their target. And the spaces that we have available after that will be what we will offer out through HAP. And so that number changes every year. And accordingly, the number of students who get a contract through HAP changes every year. So from my perspective, your student's best bet is to go through living learning programs. They get to apply to exactly the programs they wanna to apply to. They know where those programs are located on our campus so they know which building they're looking at and they will know whether or not they've been accepted before the end of the first semester. But all three of these processes are hosted on the STARRES portal. Your students should be very familiar with the portal. This is where they signed their initial housing contract when they came in for this academic year. And then I wanna make sure you have the contacts for the three offices. Uh, so housing services, there's our website, our email address is housing at vt.edu. Our phone number is 540-231-6205. If your student or you have a question about a specific living learning program, I encourage you to reach out to the Office of Living Learning Programs. Their email address is livinglearning at vt.edu, and that's sort of the best way to contact them. They have multiple staff in the office who monitor that inbox and get back to folks very quickly. If you have questions about residential well-being student leaders, you're welcome to reach out to them directly as well because they run their own employment process. And so the email is vtrwb at vt.edu. You're also welcome to give them a call. And I will also drop these uh, phone numbers and emails and websites in the chat in just a second, uh, but want to make sure that you saw those there. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we will do some of the q and I'm going to take a, I haven't even looked at them yet, so I don't know what I'm about to see. Um, I'll take a quick look and see uh, if there's anything that we want to answer to the group at large. And if not, uh, I'll start working on through here. Um, so we've got some good questions. If you apply to HAP, can you apply with a roommate group? That's a great question. So students who apply through HAP can do what we call like a link. And so what happens there is if we make an offer to one member of the link, we'll make an offer to both. Uh, that doesn't change the randomness of the lottery. And so it just means that if we, we we look at them as one entry as opposed to two separate entries, it's still equally random, but you can absolutely apply as a linked pair. Um, if a non-living learning program first year student and their mate both want to return and room together, how likely is this if they both apply to the same LLP? Um, 
that's hard to gauge. I'll be very upfront. Some of our programs are a little more competitive than others. All of our programs are fantastic, but some of them are also just bigger. So when you think about the residential college at West AJ, that is one of our biggest buildings on campus. And so they have more flexibility to take in more returning students than say a program like Studio 72, which is located in CID. And they're one of three programs in that building. So it's a smaller building and it's shared by more programs. And so when we're thinking about that, I would think about our buildings and programs that are bigger, that have more flexibility to take returning students. So like the Residential College at West AJ, the Leadership and Social Change Residential College at, in O'Shaughnessy, those are some of our bigger programs that have more flexibility to take on more returning students who may want to link together. Um, that doesn't mean that you couldn't be really successful in doing this with Studio 72 or Meraki or Galileo and Hypatia. I'm just trying to think about like, how do I best advise you on which are our biggest programs in our biggest buildings who have that kind of flexibility? Um, we've got a question about what percent of second year students live on campus. That's gonna vary from year to year, right? So we are really committed to the success of our living learning programs. And so we're gonna prioritize returners coming back through those programs. And if they do really well, then we do fewer HAP contracts. Um, but I would say in terms of our actual returning students, our goal is to have at least 1300 living learning program returners. So there's plenty of space for your student to be one of them. Um, we have someone to ask if my students in an LLC at residential, age, West, residential college at West AJ with a two-year option, is she able to pick her roommate for next year? Absolutely. So when we roll over those contracts and notify students, they're able to do much like they did this year. They can either search for a roommate through the Starrest portal or, which I think is a better idea, make sure she's attending events through the residential college, which is meeting people in person and connecting with folks in person. And that way she's able to find a good roommate option and they can go in as a roommate group and pick a room together the way that they did in their first year. Um, Nikki, I want to point out that maybe, and it might be my fault because I think yep. all three of us are scrolling through the, the questions. Yep. Uh, I know that the questions sometimes jump, but uh, there are some that um, we're kind of skipping over and I, I'm trying to answer a few of them, but I don't know them very well, but um, up at Joanna Johnson, if a non LLP first year student has the roommate, both want to return roommate together next year, how likely is it if they both apply to the same LLP? Yep, that's the one I just answered. Okay, great. So um, are all LLC programs guaranteed housing, even if the student does not apply for an officer position for the second year? So not every LLP has folks come back in specific leadership or officer position. So the positions that folks return in vary by living learning program. So for example, the Orion program brings back some students to live in as peer mentors and teaching assistants in the program, but they also have an off-campus option and students apply for that a little bit differently. Similarly, the Galileo and Hypatia programs have a lot of their student leaders living in, but not necessarily all of them. And so I would look at that more program by program as opposed to making sort of a blanket statement there. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Can first years apply as SLs for next year? Yes. So a lot of our student leaders are gonna be sophomores. So they are gonna be sophomores by the time they take the position, they're not sophomores right now. Um, and so absolutely, residential being would love to see a lot of our current first years apply to be SLs. Uh, the bigger the pool, the better the program. So absolutely, we'd love to see that. Um, can I repeat which LLC is two years? So it, students who are gonna be two year committed have already made that commitment. They did that when they came in this year. So the residential college at West AJ, the Honors Residential Commons that's located in East AJ, and the Leadership and Social Change Residential College that's located in O'Shaughnessy Hall. If someone applied to them as a first year, they made a two-year commitment. Now, if they're, a, if they're a sophomore or junior now, and they're applying for next year, it's only one year after that. The two-year only applies to first-year students who apply as a first year coming in. After that, it's just one year. Um, my student's a first year in Galileo. If he applies as a returner, is there another two credit class for sophomores that started with the LLC? Be very transparent. I'm less clear on what upperclassmen requirements are for Galileo and Hypatia. Um, it is a very in-depth program and I don't want to speak incorrectly. So my recommendation, and I'm going to post this in the chat, would actually be to look at the, um, the LLC's website 
or even have your student reach out and talk to their mentor about what the experience that they're having right now and what their requirements are. Um, so I'm gonna drop here in the chat the overview of Galileo and Hypatia, um, and you are welcome to look at that more in depth. I just don't wanna give you bad information. Uh, when will HAP students be notified of acceptance? We generally do HAP notifications around February 1st, and then students have about two weeks to get back to us via our Valentine on February 14th. Um, so that will be later on. If a first year applies to the residential college at West AJ, are they accepting a two-year commitment? Not if you're applying at this time. So like if your first year is not part of WAD right now, but they are applying for next year, that's just one year at a time. Um, someone asked, where can we see the LLP in dorm building assignments? Um, if you were to go to the overall living learning program page, and once we move to our, my colleagues off campus housing, I'll start putting some of these links in the chat. There'll be, you can go program by program. What is the mission of the program? What is the program requirements? And where is that program located? And I'll drop those links shortly. Um, our second year LLC applicants likely to be accepted. Can we count on that? I know I mentioned a little bit earlier, some of the programs are a little more competitive than others. And so some of our, our programs that are in bigger buildings and have more flexibility are gonna maybe be a little less, we're gonna have more flexibility, a little less competitive. You can apply for up to three living learning programs when you do this. So if there's a program your student just has their heart set on, that should be their top choice. But if they also just wanna make sure that they live on campus and there are other programs they're interested in, apply for three and make sure that one of those is one of our bigger programs that has more space and more flexibility. Um, how does the student pick a roommate for next year? I'll talk about a little bit on campus, but that's also a great question for off-campus folks. Um, so students for on-campus, much like they did this year, will be able to search the Star Wars portal to make roommate groups. And if they're currently in a living learning program and they're returning to that program, I really recommend make sure you're being active in the program, make sure you're going to those events, you're connecting with your fellow residents because those are the people that you're that are coming back with you and that you can room with. Um, is Residential College at West AJ considered, considered an LLP for a student that wasn't in that as a freshman? In other words, when do you apply? You apply starting September 30th. Um, and so that's when those applications were open and you'll be able to join a program for the first time, apply to return to the program that you're in or apply to switch programs. Uh, the language program at Mosaico seems to have fewer students. Can you discuss the options there, please? Um, so Mosaico has a number of different language houses. And so while the program itself is actually pretty big, it's most of the building of Harper, the individual language houses may be smaller. So when you're thinking about, we've got German house and Spanish house, and I'm not going to be able to remember them all off the top of my head, but uh, you've got multiple language houses. And so that language house may be smaller, but the overall program is much bigger. Um, and so students will be able to respond in their application, which, which house they're most interested in. And when they get an offer, they'll also be told what group they're being offered for. Um, are any of the LLCs moving dorms next year? Not that we currently plan to do at this moment. <laughs> at the moment, as far as I'm aware, we have no plans to move anybody this year. I'm really tired of moving people around. So hopefully we're good for at least another year. Um, what if you find out in February that the student was not able to get housing for the lottery? What do you do then? When we close HAP, we will open the fall wait list. So your students welcome to put themselves on the wait list. If they're in HAP they're autumn, and they don't get an offer, they're automatically part of the wait list. We don't ask them to do that again. That's a lot of work for something they've already done. We will, our honest advice at that point is if we're not able to offer you something through HAP, connect with our colleagues in off-campus housing, start your off-campus search. It is always our goal to offer housing to as many of our students as we possibly can, but there are more of you than there are beds. And so we don't want people to put themselves in a bad situation where they're they're hanging on deep into the summer and we're never able to offer them something and they don't have a place secured. So at that point, you don't have to take an offer if we offer it to you. If you're on the wait list and you do an off-campus search and you find a place that you love and then we say, hey, you're on the wait list, we have an opening, you don't have to take it. You can tell us, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm already, I've already found someplace else. Um, but that is that is my most honest answer is if we're not able to give you something in HAP, I would start conducting an off-campus search and our friends in off-campus, I'll talk about that shortly. Um, can you speak to the time and training involved with being a registered leader as a sophomore? 
Yeah, I would honestly recommend that your student attend the information session. So Resident Evil Being is holding multiple, both in-person and Zoom information sessions. So when your student logs on to the SARS portal and starts that process, that's one of the first pages that they hit is here are all of our information sessions and they should attend those and they'll be get, they'll get tons of great information about expectations there at those. Um, and then I'm just gonna try to be mindful of time. We're gonna do a couple more things and then I'll switch over and I'll keep typing as we need to. Does it matter if you apply on 9.30 or closer to when application shows on 11.22 for LLCs? Does it help you to apply earlier? I'm gonna say it does because sometimes our programs get a huge number of applications and they can't possibly take everybody and they close before the actual overall closing date. So I think last year, five or six of our programs received such a great number of applications for returning students that they actually were not able to receive applications after about at the end of October in the first part of November. So if you know, if your student knows they want to return, absolutely the sooner the better, go ahead and get that application in. Um, and so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my part. Um, I will stay on the Q&A and make sure that we get you answers, but I want to make sure my colleagues have plenty of time. They got some great information for you. So thank you so much for your attention and your questions. They've been great. I'm still here. Just going to go quiet. Nikki, you are amazing. Uh, I don't know how there's so much room in your head for all this information. You're, you're lightning, uh, Nikki Lightning Smith. Uh, I'm I'm overwhelmed by your uh, by your ability to do that. Uh, yes, lots of questions still in the in the chat. Uh, families, you have the ability to look at all the questions that have been asked. So if you're thinking, I think somebody asked that or they talked about it, look back in the Q and A uh, before you uh, ask the question again. But you know, if you ask the question again, we'll try to get to it. Speaking of getting to it, we're going to have Ava and Bree share. They are student liaisons for the Office of Off Campus Housing here at Virginia Tech, and we'll throw that link in the chat also. Bree, Ava, take it away. All right, well, hi everyone. It is so nice to see you all. Um, my name is Bree Williams. I am a senior here at Virginia Tech, and I've been working with off-campus housing for my entire college career. So ever since I was a freshman, it's been wonderful, and my major is agricultural sciences. Hey guys, my name is Ava. I am also a senior. I started working for off-campus housing last January and I'm majoring in neuroscience. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about our office today. So I'm going to share my screen for our presentation that we have today. All right, I'm hoping everyone can see this. Um, so we are the, we can see this, right, Ava? Yes. Okay, awesome. So we are the off-campus housing office. Uh, we are under the branch of student engagement and campus life, which is under student affairs. Uh, our office is located in the Squire Student Center. If you're not sure where that is, it's also where the office of NSFP is as well. Uh, we are just one story down, uh, a little easier to get to. So if you guys would like to, we do have this QR code up here, which is the link to our website. So you guys can see what we're talking about when we're following along with it. Um, and also just to get a layout of what we're talking about in this presentation. So to start off, oh, sorry, Ava, yeah. you want to go? Yeah, so this is just a little brief bio about who we are. So we're Virginia Tech off-campus housing and essentially we are here to provide resources to you and your students to find housing um, outside of the residence halls. And we're essentially supposed to give you guys some guides and tools to find these housing options for you. Um, essentially, we are a liaison between you and the students and the off-campus housing complexes. And just as a disclaimer, we do not own any of the properties ourselves. We are simply um, just helping you through this process of finding housing. Yeah, and so there's a whole lot of things to consider when thinking about living off, cam uh, off campus. Uh, one of the biggest things is price and what range that might be in. Um, another important thing are the lease dates. So a lot of the leases start around August or July, uh, but obviously it varies very much depending on which apartment complexes you choose. Um, and another important thing to think about is subletting. So if your student is considering studying abroad, for example, and they need to um, sublet their apartment for half a semester. That's another thing to consider. 
um, amenities, such as if the place has a gym or a pool, is also something to take into consideration. Uh, utilities, such as water, electricity, trash, it's important to see whether or not that is included in the rent or if it's outside of that cost. Um, location is another big thing we have a lot of students asking about because everyone everyone wants to live close to campus. So, um, but luckily there is the Blacksburg Transit, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And that actually goes to many of the off-campus housing locations. Um, yeah, just transportation is that last thing to take into consideration when finding an off-campus housing. Okay, so the largest tip that we give anyone starting to look for housing, uh, if they want to live off campus, is you have to budget. So how much is my student or am I willing to pay every month, uh, including groceries, utilities, parking fees, laundry, if there's laundry in unit with your apartment, or if there's laundry um, outside of the apartments, or if they're going to have to go to a laundromat. There are so many different complexes that have so many different uh, price ranges. There are going to be places that we talk about that have everything included in the rent. So including all of your utility fees, all of your amenity fees, all of your parking fees, all looped into one thing. And then there are going to be other ones like places where other students live, where things are going to be divided up. They still all add up to the same thing, but you're going to have to pay them on different accounts. Uh, it just depends and varies. So when you come to our office that is the first thing that we are probably going to ask you, hey, my student is ready to move off campus, or hey, I'm ready to move off campus, where do I start? We're going to ask you what your budget is a month so that we can help find you someplace that fits within your price range. Um, so everything is in one place. Uh, if you did go to the QR code or go to the link that Barry put in the chat, this is what our website looks like. Uh, everything is one place at this website, and on here, you can actually browse the listings for the leases and subleases that are in the blacksburg Christiansburg area, and you can also see the property's price ranges on how much you guys would have to pay a month. You can see the location of the property on a map. We do have a map section, uh, which I think is one of the next slides. Uh, you can sign in using your VT credentials, so that's just your PID, your student PID, and whatever your password is. So you can find roommates if you're not sure who you would like to live with next year. We do have a roommates tab for that. And then you can also find out on here what utilities are included. Uh, on these property listings, they will say what is included, which can be water, electric, sewage, trash, all those different things, parking, all those different things. But it really does depend on the place, and that's what this website helps with. Yeah, so here's that map that Bree was talking about. And so on the left side, all those little blue dots are potential um, leasing options for your student. And then on the other side are just the descriptions of all of those. And at the top, you can kind of see how you can filter through those options by price range. Um, if you want a townhouse or apartment complex, um, building type, campus location. Um, and then if you press more, you can filter it through many other options like um, how long the lease is or if there's laundry in unit or um, if um, they do subletting, for example. And another really good feature that you can do when you click on the more is you can see the uh, transit lines that the buses go through to see what stops the bus takes and how close that is to your potential um, off-campus housing spot. So we definitely recommend going to our website and just kind of having like a field day looking all through this because there's many um, great resources with this. Yeah, and then here is that roommate finder that we mentioned before. So if you sign in with your VT credentials, you can create a profile, um, which is kind of just like a little Facebook page is how we like to call it. And you can look at other people's profiles and essentially find a roommate that fits um, your needs and stuff like that. Um, and since it's through Virginia Tech and our credentials, it's like a friend that it is another student. Um, so yeah, this is just a great option if your student is looking for other roommates to find. So we've already seen some of these questions in the chat about the different types of leases. So there are mainly two types of leases uh, within the Blacksburg area, and that is a joint lease and an individual lease. Uh, the percentage of which housing complexes are these does vary about 50-50. There are also some complexes that do only joint or only individual, or some do a mix of both. Uh, it really is about 50-50 here in Blacksburg. So I think that the one that people get the most scared with is a joint lease. That is when all roommates are on the same lease. Uh, all of the roommates are held responsible for a cost if one roommate does not pay. Now, that's not always a bad and scary thing. I am on a joint lease with my roommates that I live with, and we've never had any problems with somebody not paying. 
Uh, one thing that we also have outlined out is a roommate agreement. So not sure how many people understand this, but anything that you sign with another person is a legal document. You can go Grey's Anatomy style and sign a post-it, or you can draft up an actual agreement between roommates that say you will agree to pay this much every single month. If that person does not pay that, you can take legal action against that person just not against the apartment complex that you are currently at. That that roommate agreement is just for you and you alone. Uh, it has nothing to do with the apartment complex. They cannot do anything. Legally you can, but they cannot do anything. Um, so if you do sign a joint lease, you will be responsible for another person's rent if that person is not able to pay it. Not that scary though. I have that, it's never been an issue. Uh, individual leases is also something that I've lived on in the past. I think that Ava has too where each roommate is able to sign their own lease and they are only responsible for the amount of money that they are paying. They are not responsible for anybody else. That also doesn't really cause any issues either. I lived with roommates who definitely paid their rent, but if they didn't, it would not have been my problem. And that is sometimes a safer bet with people that you're living with, but also that doesn't mean you shouldn't draft up a roommate agreement for other things, whether that's a cleaning schedule or anything else. That's just something that we recommend to anyone. But those are the two main types. Um, and if we have more questions about that, we can answer that afterwards. And then there's also the difference between a sublet and a sublease. So what that means is you'll be renting your room or your, your room, your apartment to a new tenant because you have to leave or you are trying to come back. This is most common with our study abroad students that we have, uh, but there is a difference between the two. So a sublet is directly with the landlord or with the actual apartment complex itself. Uh, the apartment complex would collect the payment. There would be a termination of the contract with the original person that would be living there. And the new tenant is responsible for absolutely everything that happens there. It's very direct. This is mostly for students that might be graduating after they study abroad. So they're just ready to get all their stuff out anyways. Someone could be coming back from a study abroad and they need a place to live for the rest of the year. This is a good solution for that. Most of the time they'll be posted on the website and they will actually tell you where everything is for this sublet information. A sublease would be with the actual tenant themselves. Um, the payment would be collected by that tenant. There would be no termination and the original tenant would be responsible for anything that happens within that room. So for example, if I want to leave for a study abroad and I find Ava, Ava would then sublease from me and then she would send me the money and I would do take care of everything on my side. But if it is it because I want to come back. But if I don't want to come back, that's when she would sublet and she would stay there for the rest of the time. Now it's a little confusing sometimes, but that's why we have this little thing here. People are welcome to take pictures of it or you can send us messages afterwards. Yeah, and then so back to that location thing. So we have a lovely thing called Blacksburg Transit, the bus system. They actually just redesigned all of it. So the, there's a whole new looping system and all the information can be found on that app, the Blacksburg Transit. I have that app, I've had that since freshman year. It is a really useful app to figure out where all the stops are going, how close is it to your um, classroom or your um, off-campus housing. Um, and yeah, you can even look on that side thing, plan a little trip to see where you're going, you're coming from and when that bus is going to leave. So yeah, definitely a great resource to get the app um, to utilize traveling to and from off campus. However, if you or your student chooses to have a car, there are some parking options available on campus. Um, this was for the past 2024, 2025 year. So there's uh, several different options for parking passes. There's the year permit, um, the semester one, the evening only, um, there's daily permits, and then there's um, ones for motorcycle vehicles as well. So if that is something that your student is interested in, then there's definitely plenty of um, parking options available and parking passes to choose from if they would rather do, do that than take the Blacksburg Transit. But personally for me, the bus system has worked perfectly and I either walk or just take the bus to campus. So either way works, it just depends on what you need. So one question that we get a lot is availability. Um, and the question that we get the most is when is the best time to start looking for housing? The correct answer to that is whenever you're comfortable. There is no perfect time to look for housing. Uh, most of the time, the housing search tends to begin 
from September to December. That is when the option to renew opens up for the tenants that are currently living in off-campus housing and the application processes do start for students to apply to live at these property management companies. Remember, you would not apply through us as the school. The school does not own or lease any properties. You would actually apply through these third-party systems themselves. We do guide you through that. We can give you contact information and we can encourage you on how to go through this process, but we do not do it directly for you. Um, I was a person that started my search in January, February of my freshman year, and I still found a place just the same. It does not matter when you start as long as you are comfortable with it. Uh, January, March, though, is when there tends to be a decrease in availability. So maybe not every option around Blacksburg is going to be open. There are some places that are going to be full at that point. Most of the time when students move off campus, they tend to stay off campus. That's not the case for everything, but that is an option that a lot of students do tend to take just because they're already out there. Uh, April and May is a big decrease in availability. And most of the time, that's when everything is going to start closing out. You might not get your first choice or you might not get everything that you want, like a pool or a gym or in unit laundry, but you will still have a place to lay your head and have a kitchen. And then the May through August, you know, the summer search, that's when there's going to be a very, very small um, amount of places left, especially if you want to rent an entire unit, maybe with your friends or people that you've met with. There's going to be a very small amount of those. However, there are always open rooms in places where maybe you don't really care who you live with. They do happen to have a lot of spare rooms where they don't have entire units filled yet. Um, like I said, these numbers should not scare you. If you don't feel like you need to start looking, then you don't need to start looking. But if you feel like you do, you obviously are welcome to contact us and we will help you. The availability is open for next year for pretty much all of the uh, complexes around the area. So they will just start taking people as they go. And then this is the student legal service. So a lot of people don't recognize that we have this on campus. This is also in Squires with NSFP and us, but SLS provides free legal advice for currently enrolled VT students on issues such as leases, traffic tickets, criminal charges, consumer issues, contracts, wills, et cetera. That includes your roommate agreement that you drafted up in your bedroom at 3 a.m. <laughs> so this is their contact information. They are um, open for services as far as I'm aware. And they, this is included in your tuition. So it is, it's not free, but it, you don't have to pay anything when you are there. Um, it is a great service. We recommend it for any issues that you may be having. And I know that we've had some issues in the past with students just for certain things. Um, we direct them here and most of their issues tend to get resolved and we don't hear back from it, which is always a good thing. Yeah, and this last page is just our contact information. Please feel free to contact us via phone, email. You can also um, set up appointments with us if you'd like to just talk one-on-one -on -one with one of us about potential housing options and what you're looking for and how we can best fit those needs for you. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, that is our presentation. We will do our best to answer any questions that people are having. So let's see. I've got one right now, and this is kind of one that we get in our office, and this is a very general question, uh, yes, Ava very. and Bree, and it's um, oftentimes, and and I and I get it, families. We just want to get it right. We just want to make sure that we're that we don't mess up, and that our poor child is not left unhoused. But uh, we hear that a lot of folks are kind of get in a panic right about now, right about September, October. And they, they, they hear the rumor is at Virginia Tech, if you don't have everything worked out for your second year housing off campus by October, then there's no way. So I'd like you just to address that mythology uh, real quickly, if you could. Yes. So that is a very common fear that a lot of people have. It is a myth. All the housing is still very much there at the end of October, the end of December, the end of January, even at the end of March after spring break, there is still plenty of housing in Blacksburg and Christiansburg area. Like I said, as the year progresses, the availability might decrease. There is a chance you might not get the perfect studio apartment bedroom for, you know, $1,200 a month right downtown next to campus. There's a chance you might not get that in the middle of February. 
but that doesn't mean that we haven't seen it done in the past. There are definitely going to be places that do fill up and fill out relatively quickly only because lots of upperclassmen renew living there after so many years. However, that doesn't mean that they don't take on new tenants at all. And there is still so many other places that we will direct you to that have open availability for most likely the same thing that you want. Ava, anything to add? Yeah, I was that scared student. Um, I signed <laughs> up early um, and it all worked out, but I definitely wish I had more time to think about it and consider who I was living with. And I think it is definitely a, a fear that is put into the minds of everyone that you have to find housing by September or there's nothing left. And that is completely not true. Like Bree said, there are many options. I have had many friends that have signed January, February, and that kind of thing. It's just, yes, the options are a little bit less, but there's plenty of housing. I mean, we've witnessed firsthand, like we can see as the percentages of housing um, goes down and there's still plenty of options definitely come February. So yeah, do not fear. It is definitely very important to consider where you want to live and who you want to live with. Um, it'd be really sad to end up living with someone that you signed a le lease with within one month of living with and it turns out you didn't really live well together. So it's definitely important to think about that uh, before you sign a lease for the next year. Families, if you haven't figured it out by now, the Blacksburg uh, retail community, uh, capitalism is alive and well, and uh, they will build it because you will come. And um, yeah, it's there. Here's a good question that's in the, the Q&A, uh, Ava and Bree, uh, about like predatory, landlords or you know kind of the uh the tick sheet of you know good good and bad and who gets the one star and who gets the five stars is 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 virginia tech at all responsible for keeping track of any of that or what's a good resource for for folks so we do definitely keep track of any type of misdeeds that happen uh, especially with specific property management companies, popular ones that students live out. We do have track of that. However, there are also going to be bad people that we cannot always see or know about. What we often do is we do direct students to student legal. And I would argue that there are a lot of times when students do get their issues resolved. If not, then there is a chance to take it to the Dean of Students here on campus. Uh, which is a higher, much higher power than we have with some of these issues. One thing that we would check is making sure that there are also people that sign privately and who do not work with the property management company. Sometimes there are just landlords. And one thing that we agree with is having everything ever written out on paper, any type of agreement that you have for anything, again, with that student legal, anything you sign is going to be a contract so if you have anything in writing, any type of payment needs to be written down just so you have the legal proof. If there is something wrong or there's some misdeeds that are happening, you can take legal action against it. Good answer. I do want to just kind of hop on something that Bree yeah, said. Is please do. About contracts, all these off-campus leases being legally binding. The same is true for an on-campus contract, right? So I, I kind of answered this one in the Q&A a little bit, but... Somebody asked, like, hey, should I do like an LLC as a backup in case I don't find what I want off campus? I can't tell you how to run your life. But what I do want to caution you about is once you sign either an on-campus contract or an off-campus lease, you are committed to that property. Um, and so if you go through the LLP returner process and you accept an offer and you sign your on-campus housing contract and then you come back to us in February and say, I really don't want to. I've got an off-campus property. like, that's tough. You've already signed this. It's legally binding. And so we're not obligated to relieve you of a burden you've placed upon yourself uh, by acting too hastily. So, and neither is the off-campus location either. So please be thoughtful about what you're committing to. They are legally binding. If you're not sure you want to live on campus, don't sign an on-campus housing contract. If you're not sure you want to live with a particular group of people, don't sign a lease with them. Um, and so just be mindful of what you're doing because you are committed once you sign. Yes, that is a very true statement that Nikki said. Um, these housing contracts for both sides, both on campus and off campus are legally binding contracts. If there are extenuating circumstances, that is when we heavily encourage you going to get legal action or going to talk to Nikki or our office to see what we can assist you in. 
another good question on here is how do we know where to find about legal issues or scary incidents in the off-campus housing apartments? Is there any way that we as parents can search or find? We as an office legally cannot disclose that information, unfortunately. One thing that we can do is we can um, encourage your student to look for multiple options. If one thing that we love to do is encourage parents to go to the parent pages, ask about these properties, ask what these parents have had experiences with. Remember, these properties are very, very large. They, you know, hundreds of thousands of students have lived in these properties over the years. There are some places that maybe a student has had a bad incident with and other places where students have had very good times living. I live in one of the oldest apartment complexes in Blacksburg. Uh, it's called Fox Ridge. It's old. A lot of people either really are not fans of it because it's old and people like me, I have, I feel like it has a lot of character and I have loved it my entire time that I've been here. So it really does vary on the student and the situation itself. I would consult the parent pages. A lot of parents will not be afraid to speak, speak their minds for something like that. Um, but also you can talk to us individually for an office and we can give you our best answers and encouragement of where your student would like to live. Hey, Fox Ridge was around when I was a student back in the 80s, man. I delivered thousands of pizzas. To... This is a very, very old, old place, <laughs> but I love it. It's it's my favorite place. And like me, it has a lot of character. Um, hey, here's a great question. So I know there's a housing fairs uh, here on campus. Uh, we had a helpful uh, person point out that the date on the off-campus housing website is a little out of date. Do you guys know when the off-campus housing fair is going to be? Yes, our off-campus housing fair is going to be October 30th, the Wednesday this year. I, I see that the, the, the year is off, but yes, October 30th, we're going to have a housing fair in Squires Ballroom, and essentially there's going to be a whole bunch of apartment complexes that are going to come, and they're going to have all bunch of free goodies and candies and that kind of thing, and they would love to talk about to your student about what they offer, their amenities, their pricing, and all of that. We highly recommend students to come to that. It's from 10 to 4 that Wednesday. Um, yeah, we'd love to see you there. It's, it's a really great opportunity to just look at all the available complexes in the area. Excellent. Correct day, wrong year. All right. That's good to know. Get, that is get, also, right, on, get right on oh, that, Ava. <laughs> I was going to say, this is also in no way, shape, or form a place where your student signs a lease at all. That is absolutely what that is. Not even sending in an application. This is strictly informative so that students are able to see their options. Uh, like I said, Fox Ridge, my favorite apartment place, comes and they you know, sell themselves essentially to these students. Fox Ridge is further away from campus. I like it that way. I like being able to come home and hear none of the freeway traffic or anything like that is a further place. There are some students like who want to live at the edge, which is literally at the edge of campus that is owned by CMG. They will be there. Students want to look at their options. So there are plenty of different things for students to look at at the fair. That is in no way, shape, or form a legally binding thing. They are there to go talk to people and get some goodies. Lots of goodies. Lots of more Frisbees and plastic cups than you can ever want for your whole life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we are nearing 55 minutes, and I know that uh, we are honoring our time that we have. We're going to go ahead and formally end the webinar um, I want to let folks know, though, that we are we have recorded this webinar. We will post it on our new student and family programs YouTube channel. And since you are attending, unless you're attending anonymously, uh, we've got your email address, attendees. And so we're going to send you an email early next week uh, with the transcript, with the chat and all the links that were in the transcript. And if Ava and Bree and Nikki are willing to share PDF versions of their slide decks, we're going to send you the slide decks too and a link to the recording in our YouTube uh, channel after I clean up the transcript because the translator wants to do funny things with our language. We will stay on and try to continue answering questions, but we're going to go ahead and formally, formally end, um, but we will stay on. Uh, for the, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank very, very much. Thank Ava and Bree for sharing with us. Fantastic job. Wow, you guys seem like you've done this before. And uh, Nikki, once again, a wealth of information and rapid fire answering. 
Uh, yeah, folks, if you want to put a thank you in the, the Q&A so our panelists will see that, that's helpful too. Um, so once again, thank you very much. We will stick around and answer uh, more questions until we absolutely have to leave. Have a great night. We hope to see you at Fall Family Weekend. If you haven't registered yet, get online and register through the Hokie Family Hub. Uh, once again, thank you very much to Nikki, to Bree, to Ava. My name is Barry Lenore with New Student Family Programs. And let's go. Okies. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mute in time. <laughs> All right. Ending the recording.